you miss them yet? Well, they're gone. That was just a sample of the final question period of the year where the sky-high cost of housing dominated the debate. Then, very early this morning, MPs officially rose from the House for the summer. It means the legislative process is largely on hold until they return to Ottawa in mid-September. Earlier today, I spoke with Government House Leader Mark Holland about the past few months and the road ahead. Mr. Holland, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you being here. Thanks, Mike. I wanted to ask you, the opposition had made it clear that they didn't want to take a break until there was a firm commitment going forward on the Chinese interference. So does that mean that at this point that there is going to be some sort of announcement soon because the house is broken? No, look, I was very clear uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, I listed what the House needed to get done in terms of legislation. Uh, there was really critical legislation on, uh, on everything from uh, the environment to making life more affordable uh, to public safety that we needed to see advancement on, mm -hmm. we needed to see get adopted. And in 15 weeks, uh, we had adopted 15 bills. Uh, we were able to get basically that full list that I listed out three weeks ago. Uh, and that's the reason that Parliament was able to lift. Um, there are ongoing conversations that are separate and apart from uh, from the House lifting around the issue of foreign interference, but that, that isn't why the House lifted. But they said they didn't want the House to rise until that was settled. Well, I mean, uh, whatever internal machinations are going on in their mind, uh, I, you know, it might be the case. But, I, but we were very clear uh, in the conversations that we had about the House lifting uh, that we were ready to stay until we got our legislative agenda done. Uh, and uh, there were a number of really critical bills that were uh, still left out there. Uh, and fortunately, the opposition uh, came and said, OK, we're ready to, to go a couple of days early and to let those bills pass. Uh, but, the, but foreign interference, uh, and, and, and which is a separate issue, I'm sure we're going to talk about yeah. it, uh, that, that is a separate conversation and was not part of those discussions. A separate conversation, but one that Canadians really do want to have. So I wanted to ask you this specifically. Why did it take Mr. David Johnston deciding to resign for your government to even consider now a public inquiry? Well, look, let's first take a step back and recognize that when we're talking about foreign interference, whether or not it's China or Russia or any foreign actor mm -hmm. trying to attack our democracy, uh, that there's no win for any political party here. The, their objective is not um, to tinker with our democracy, it's to destroy democracy, right. uh, to plow democracy into the dirt. Uh, and so we have to be very, uh, I think, judicious in the conversations we have with one another. Uh, it's clear that the opposition was not satisfied uh, with the work that Mr. Johnson did. He's an, he's an eminent Canadian. Uh, he made a series of recommendations looking at that information. What we're trying to do now is to work collaboratively to find solutions because we don't think we should have partisan warfare over something as fundamental of, as protecting our democracy. Uh, this is about how we ensure that foreign powers uh, aren't able to uh, adversely impact our democracy. You talk about the process and trying to be collaborative. I think Canadians sort of look at this and they say, you know, government came together with opposition during COVID and that was a massive threat. This likely an even, even bigger threat now to Canadian democracy. Why are we not seeing that same type of collaboration around this? Well, I think you are. I think they're very productive and collaborative conversations. Well, I mean, it's, you, 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 have I, said, you yourself said it was combative and that sure. they have been combative. That's and, the nature of our system. I mean, yeah, it is the nature of our system, but at the same time, it took a former governor general to resign to actually move the ball forward here. Look, I, I think... In, in, so I will be partisan for a second. I think that the opposition, and particularly the Conservatives, have been incredibly torqued on this issue. They seem to be more interested in their partisan gain than they do the issue of national security or, or, or establishing confidence in our, in our institutions. Uh, and, and, and that was disturbing. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, the opposition should be adversarial. They got to push us. They got to disagree. You didn't have a but role to play in that at all? The government uh, didn't have oh, a role sure. to play? Look, I, you've been in uh, arguments with people. Uh, there's no such thing as 100% right. at fault. So so yeah, obviously uh, we have to take ownership about uh, always trying to do better. And, and part of that is the spirit we're reaching out now. And I think we're having very productive conversations with the other parties. And we're just saying we've got to take the partisanship out of this. This is an existential threat to our democracy and frankly to all democracies. And that we need to demonstrate mature conversation. Because if we're having partisan warfare over this kind of stuff, then frankly China and Russia are winning. They're, they're pulling us into their trap. They want yeah. us to be having these kinds of dis disagreements. and, and 
and for them to get as heated as sometimes this does. So we're trying to take that temperature down. We're trying to have mature conversations about how we face this together and we and stop looking at how you can win some kind of party advantage for mm -hmm. it. There's lots of places for us to appropriately uh, cross swords on, on the big issues that are facing this country. But I don't think Canadians want that on national security. I think on national security and protecting our democracy, they want to see exactly what you were talking about, the work that we were able to do, uh, particularly at the beginning of COVID mm -hmm. when we faced that real threat of coming together and finding solutions. That's what we're trying to do. Now in our system, fortunately, we have an adversarial opposition that's job is to oppose. So it's a challenge to get on the same page. But we're up to that challenge and we're trying to do it. I want to talk to you about the legislative agenda quickly. Uh, you had talked about how there were 15 uh, bills in the last 15 weeks. I mean, part of that did involve, you know, invoking closure and um, uh, really sort of saying that you're going to have extended sittings. One of the ones, one of the legislations that didn't pass fully, C-21, the gun bill. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a failure on your government's part or was it just not a priority? No, I think, again, this is an example of, of really critical legislation to take on um, uh, uh, handguns and to take on uh, making sure that we don't have uh, assault style uh, weapons mm -hmm. that are on our streets um, and that any time you're dealing with guns I used to be the critic for public safety and national security any time you deal with firearms uh, you're, you're coming up with two very important things on the one hand you have people who have used it either for their livelihood or it's a it's a major part of uh, of their uh, of, of what of, of what they like to do uh, maybe they do it for sport um, and then on the other hand we have public safety and both of those you know people who have been victimized by guns so this is a very sensitive subject every time you enter into it it's going to be delicate and it's going to be a, 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 a process of equal, finding equilibrium so we've been trying to work through that we did get it through the house and yeah. I would point out three of four political parties supported it. the block the NDP and ourselves supported that legislation only the conservatives didn't because they have an ideological bent when it comes to guns uh, and now it's at the Senate and the Senate says that it wants to take some time I think that demonstrates demonstrates success I think that's democracy working you saw a number of changes even though the amendments I mean I don't want to say that they failed but they didn't exactly I mean you guys have to pull them back well sure but that but that is a responsible government does it listens it adjusts it wasn't a, a government that made a mistake well let me put it to you this way um, that if uh, you know, when you're trying to adopt legislation, we have committees for a reason. Mm -hmm. We have parliament for a reason. Uh, you know, we, we have parliament, and particularly in a minority government, and I've said this as House Leader from the beginning, it's our job to work with other parties. We should put things forward, recognize that they, they, they don't have support of other parties, and make amendments and changes. That's our system working. And I think we have to get out of this mode where just because something, a bill has been changed or amended, or God forbid we listen to another party and, 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 and made amendments, that isn't a bad thing. That's a a sign that our democracy is healthy and functioning and so did this take some time absolutely but the outcome which is keeping communities safe and making sure that for uh, those for whom uh, guns involve their their livelihood or or their uh, or their their passion mm -hmm. as a hobby that we're that we're finding that right balance of of, 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 of of not disrupting that at the same time as providing public safety that it makes sense to get that right it makes sense to listen to opposition parties it makes sense to take time what I love to see the Senate pass it particularly after two-thirds of the House just did. Right. Yes, but the Senate has its job to do too. Okay, I gotta ask you one last question before we let you go for the summer here. Lots of rumors around a cabinet shuffle. You just mentioned that you've been doing this job about 18 months. Uh, so I guess the question is, are you enjoying it or do you want to change? <laughs> well, look, I love this job. I, I love Parliament. Um, I love the opportunity to serve. Um, in whatever capacity uh, the Prime Minister chooses. Uh, most of all, I love to be a member of Parliament. Uh, you know, this is uh, an incredible opportunity uh, to, to represent my home community. I've done it since 2004. I hope to do it for a while. Um, but House Leader's been a, a, uh, an absolute pleasure and, uh, you know, happy to continue it or whatever other role the Prime Minister finds uh, uh, is right for me. Right. And so, yes or no to a cabinet chain, a cabinet shuffle coming? Uh, I, have, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I We're tried. all going to wait and see. I tried. Okay. Mark Hall and Government House Leader, thank you so much for doing this. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.